Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And welcome to another episode on our upgrade of the uh, 1974 Carmen Dia. Well, as we uh, mentioned in our last episode, uh, in this episode we're going to remove the uh, motor and controller, uh, the items which uh, we're going to replace with uh, after uh, the last video, those of you who've been watching will know that uh, we're going to go with the AC51 from High Performance Electric Vehicle Systems and uh, the Curtis 1239 controller. Now, before we can put those in, we've got to pull the old ones out. And we're going to offer the uh, old components for sale. So in this video, we're also going to remove the components, but we'll also take a closer look at them for anyone that might be interested. So let's get started. Well, first thing we want to do, we'll pull the blower off. So we'll remove the air cleaner here. Get it out of the way. And we'll remove the uh, support bracket here, get it out of the way, and then it just simply, simply lifts right off. We've already unplugged the, the wires. We're going to need to uh, clip a wire tie here, it looks like. Let's get some dikes to do that. And we're going to include the bracket and everything when we sell this. And it'll come complete with the uh, items we have on here. Let me grab some dice. So we have a couple wires that ran together in the same loom. Uh, we have the uh, temperature switch on the motor as well as the blower. They ran together, disconnect those. And I hope it goes without saying that we uh, have disconnected the power, so we don't have any power in anything. We don't have any accidents. Okay, so next we'll disconnect the uh, leads from the uh, controller to the motor, get those out of our way. We've had this out before. We replaced the transaxle earlier this year. Had to remove the motor for that. A lot easier to pull out this electric motor than it is to deal with the uh, gasoline version. We'll go ahead and pull it off on this side too. Just get them out of the way. onto these cables because we may use them for something else someday. So now we have a little cover right here that has to be removed. Get that out of the way and then we can drop the, uh, the motor out. Got a little cover here. Oops. 
this comes off real easy here. There we go. So, I'll uh, jack up the jack up the car, pull off this cover, and uh, that shouldn't take but a few minutes. All right, I got the bottom cover off and uh, disconnected the uh, wire on the motor there that goes between the armature and the stator. And now we're going to remove the cover here, the uh, shroud. That's the word I was looking for. So, move the shroud out of the way here. It just has a flange on the bottom side here that would kind of interfere with our jack, so I like to take it off and get it out of the way. Like I said, the, uh, the blower and the shroud here and everything, the adapter coupler will all be included with the motor. Okay, we'll simply move that out of the way. Okay, so now we are ready to remove the motor and we will put the car up on ramps to do that, get the clearance we need. jack it up, but we'll be right back. All right, I've got my handy dandy uh, transmission jack here. We just got a little cradle that we use. We use this both on the workbench and on the transmission jack. That allows us to cradle the motor nicely. So I'm going to go up and Support the motor. This allows me to match the angle. And then using our 17 millimeter wrench, we'll uh, remove the bolts, or the nuts I should say, and uh, be ready to pull it out. So I'm going to loosen everything up, and then I'll let you join me again. Well, the nuts are off. We'll give her a gentle nudge to the back here. Now the other thing is, we're going to have to Lift this up a little bit to get our clearances here. And so I gotta pull this loose. Our enclosure here is a little bit tight and we need to bring further back. So I need to be able to lift this up if this tube is in the way. So I gotta loosen up the deck lid latch in order to get some clearance to lift up our ABS right there. So let's do that. So now we can lift this up and get our clearance we need. We can continue to slide it on back here. There we go. Well, it goes a little faster if you don't have a bunch of interruptions. What I also did was I removed the uh, studs off the uh, adapter because this is a very tight fit. You've got to get just the right angle to dangle to clear. And that's where the transmission jack really comes in handy. So 
We can get it out from underneath here. Okay, here it is. Okay, one impulse nine. So we'll put this up on the workbench, spin it up on 12 volts for you. And uh, Next, we got to pull out the controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull out this whole mounting plate. So we got to disconnect the throttle. Um, disconnect uh, from our shunt here. Disconnect our coolant leads. We'll drain it from the lowest point first and pull that out. So. That's next. So in addition to turning off the power, we've taped off the, uh, the ends. So if there's, you know, somebody were to switch it on or something, anyway, better safe than sorry. So everything is shut off, taped. We've got the, uh, throttle disconnected and just hanging down out of the way. Here's a shot of the radiator and the fans. You can get a shot underneath here. Let me show you the, the one cooler mounted underneath the transaxle there. It's not the lowest point. It's about the same height as uh, the uh, anti-sway bar there. So that is our lowest point in the cooling system though, so we disconnected the hose there and draining the system. And so the next, we're going to disconnect the lines from the Evnetics. And the more I've thought about it, I think I'm going to just pull the Evnetics off. I think I can take it off the uh, mounting plate there. And that'll take the weight off the mounting plate and make that easier to remove because we will remove that for mounting a new controller. So that's what I'll do next. Right, so I've got the nuts off the back side. We'll pull the bottom bolts out here. And then we should be able to just lift this thing off. Thing. Getting ahead of myself here. Sometimes happens when you're trying to video and do something at the same time. And that is, I need to disconnect the throttle and low voltage wires from the bottom here. So let me do those real quick. And then we'll pull the controller out. There we 
have it. One Avnetics controller. Looks pretty good. Too bad it doesn't work as good as it looks. So we're going to break the seal <laughs> since there is no more warranty. It's beyond the warranty period and they're basically not in the business anymore. So let's uh, take it over the workbench. We'll pull this cover off and take a look. Okay, so one of the, uh, the little screws on the back here is a tamp-resistant screw, but a pair of vice grips, and it comes off. And it's a long one. Okay. So you can see, I was talking about type with the pin in the center. And the rest of them are just uh, an H3 Allen, which we'll just remove. This was originally almost a $2,000 controller, you know, like $1,895 or $1,995, something like that. <clears throat> Close enough to $2,000 enough to argue about. They weren't that much more than the air-cooled Curtis, only five or $600 more. Now. The fact that you had to add a cooling system did add to the cost of the overall package. But what you got was a far superior controller setup. This would, uh, this is 600 amps, but 500 continuous, where the air cooled Curtis was. Um, only 500 for a couple minutes, where this will do 600 for a couple minutes. We're probably going to have to pry it up with a screwdriver. So it would need to be siliconed before being closed up again. We won't in shipment, but you can. So let's see if we can get a little better view for the camera. Well, there you have it. This is actually a very uh, nicely done controller here 
I don't see any visible damage, so um, the IGBT didn't uh, didn't go out with a bang, but with a whimper. Ah, I think I see evidence of something right over here, right down there. I'll take a closer look to see what that is, but a little, little smoke damage. So, my guess is that this is going to be a pretty easy fix uh, for anyone who wants to purchase this and uh, make those repairs. You can see the main contactor over here. You can see your caps. It's, uh, it's a very nicely laid out, very clean very 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 nice setup they did a good job of, of, of design um, this is the side with the uh, the cooling here well let me zoom in on this one component here if I can there we go See the slightly scorched board there? Looks like it's labeled R4. It's the only visible sign that I've seen. But we showed you the error codes. And so well, there you have it. Soliton Jr. Uh, we purchased it in 2013 it uh, gave us uh, a couple good years and now it's time for it to give somebody else some good years just don't recommend it in the back of a Carmen Ghia that is uh, driven hard in high temperatures because you only get a couple of years out of it. <laughs> but under, you know, most circumstances, I think this is a, is, is a, a, a very good unit and um, you should get nice longevity out of it. So anyway, I'm gonna put the back cover back on and uh, we'll put the uh, motor up on the workbench spin it up uh, under 12 volts and uh, we're going to keep the flywheel and the clutch but um, the rest of it, like I said, we'll, we'll eventually put it up on the website for sale. So uh, motor, adapter and uh, controller and the blower. All right, as we mentioned, we put the motor on the workbench and spin it up for you. So here's the uh, adapter still on the motor. We removed the uh, clutch and flywheel. They won't be included when we uh, put these on the website for sale. But anyway, we're uh, going to include Brand new set of brushes. These are the uh, 
T300s, we'll, uh, we'll leave an installer. So the motor will come with brand new brushes on it. These are a, a split brush with the rubber top on them. Nice brushes. We had purchased those to put on here anyway. And uh, so since it's uh, out and on the workbench, uh, I think that's the time we're going to do it. So anyway, let's uh, spin it up. This is a, just an old 12 volt battery got laying around. Getting kind of weak. <laughs> I heard the contactor click there. So everything sounds real good. Nice and smooth. I wonder what the voltage drop is on this battery here. Nine volts. I think it's time to put that baby on the charger. Let's see what it does. I'll let it show up. It's uh, 9.07 volts. Let's see what it does without a load. Yeah, it's been sitting on the workbench <laughs> a little too long here. We need to put the trickle charger on it again. So it's up to 10 and a half volts. That's why we heard the contactor click. So normally if we had a good 12 volt battery, I've got that one I can swap out. It's spin a little faster. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's swap another. Let's put another battery on here just for the sake of it. Here it's spin a little faster. All right, this is actually take two. Just did all this once before I realized the camera wasn't recording. Okay, so now we've got another battery hooked up here. This is the one out of our sand rail. It's showing 12 and a half volts. So let's spin it up. It drops down to 11.8. A little better battery than, uh, than the other one. The other one's just a battery up laying around the shop. I got it back on a triple charger. But anyway, spins up nice, nice and smooth. Take the load off. It's back up to 12.4. So good battery. So that's what she sounds like. That's probably 3,000 RPMs. We're getting close to it. Sounds real good. I can feel the air come up with from over here. So they have an internal fan, and that blower just four speeds it through there. Kept this motor nice and comfortable. And controllers couldn't handle it. And all that game could. So this is the uh, the adapter that would be included. It's uh, kind of a one-piece deal. We've done a video on them in the past. Uh, you've got the coupler that's suspended in here with a couple of bearings. Makes it very easy to install. Just slip it in, four bolts, 
away you go. There's some adjustments so you can tilt it however you want. We've got it set up and we've got it marked where you want it so that when you install it in the vehicle and you put the shroud on, the fan is at the 12 o'clock position. So anyway, there you have it. That's, uh, that's it for this video. And uh, so what's next? Well, we've shown you the controller, the motor, um, so I guess what's next is uh, we wait for our parts to come in. Here's the mounting plate out of the vehicle. So when we get the new uh, controller in and the uh, chill plate and everything, we'll see if we have room to mount it on there or if we have to make any modifications. But uh, that'll probably be our next episode. So it might be a while, depending on how long it takes the parts to get here. So until then, thanks again for watching. And if you have any questions, don't, don't put the questions on the uh, YouTube channel because we don't look at that very often. It's best if you send us an email at info at ev4unow.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Like I said, uh, down the road, uh, we'll, we'll put the uh, items on the website for sale, which will be the uh, Net Gain Impulse 9 motor, the adapter, the blower and shroud, and the controller. And uh, everything works fine except for the controller. And I think that's just going to be a fairly minor repair for anyone who's uh, qualified to do that. And it'll save you some money because we're going to let it go for a reasonable price. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. Pulling the adapter off. These were uh, locked tight in place. So when you reinstall it, make sure you clean the threads and lock tight it back in place. There it goes. Turn the motor around for replacing the brushes. It's just a matter of pulling the screw out. I've got a little screwdriver that has a magnetic end in it. So Pull off the little set screw here, the little hold down screw for the brush wires. We made us our own little tool for uh, grabbing the spring and lifting the things out. 
allows me to just pull back the spring, pull out the brush, and we'll slip a new one in. It's that easy. You gotta make sure you put it in the right direction. goes.